Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be considering special angles. There are five of them, 0 degree, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees and 90 degrees. But in this video we will be focusing on three, that's 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. Why are these angles called special angles? They are called special angles because we can obtain their values without using our calculator. So, first we are going to be focusing on 45 degrees. To do that, we are going to be needing a unit square. A unit square is a square with sides of one unit. So, if this is a square... Now, also, we know that being a quadrilateral, the sum of angles in this square is 360 degrees and of course each one is 90 degrees so we've got four right angles here. If I decide to partition this square into two by introducing a diagonal across A and C like this. Now it is evident that this diagonal does two things. One, it divides the square into two equal halves. And two, it bisects this pair of angles. So the angle at A is 90 degrees. We can see that this diagonal has bisected it into 45 and 45 degrees. And also, so this square has been partitioned into two right triangles. The first one is the right triangle ADC and the second is the right triangle ABC. So the right angle is at B here, so I've got 45 degrees, the one right here, and 45 degrees at C. Similarly, 45 degrees and 45 degrees. And of course, AD is 1, DC is 1, AB is 1, and BC is 1. Now we can see that these two triangles are congruent. They are the same. So I'm just going to be focusing on one of them. Focusing on triangle ADC, we would see that by the Pythagorean theorem, I can obtain the value of AC, the length of AC. Because since this is a right triangle, I've got the hypotenuse, the opposite, the adjacent. So, to obtain the value of the length of AC, I will recourse to my Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse side, I'm just going to write that in short form, is equal to the sum of the squares of the opposite side and the adjacent sides. So, the hypotenuse is the longest side, the side facing the right angle, that's AC. So, AC squared is equal to... Now, we can just take any of the two sides as adjacent and the third one as the opposite, as the case may be, because they are pretty much the same. So, this is 1 squared plus 1 squared. Therefore, AC squared is equal to 1 squared is 1 plus 1 squared. So this is going to give 2. Taking the square root of both sides, AC is going to give root 2. Therefore, we can see that this side has a length of root 2. In the video I made on trigonometrical functions, if you haven't seen it, just click on the link. At the top right hand corner of the screen you would realize that the sine of an angle is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse the cosine is the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse and the tangent is the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent so focusing on triangle ADC the sine of 45 degrees of course, I can pick either of these 45, they are the same. So I'm going to focus on angle A. So the sine of A, 
which is 45 degrees, is going to be the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. So DC is the opposite. So I'm going to write DC. The hypotenuse is constant AC. And this is 1 over the square root of 2. So sine 45 degrees is 1 over square root of 2. Similarly, cos 45 degrees, still focusing on the 45 at angle A, is going to be the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse. Now this is the opposite that renders AC, that renders AD, I beg your pardon, as the adjacent over the hypotenuse remains the same. That's AC. AD is 1. AC is the square root of 2. So we can see that sine 45 has the same value as cos 45. Finally, tan 45 degrees, still focusing on the 45 at A, I'm going to need its opposites and its adjacents. Its opposite is DC, the side DC, and its adjacent is AD, and this is going to be 1 over 1. This is 1. Therefore, we can see that next is going to be to work out the two ratios for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. To do that, we are going to be needing an equilateral triangle. The choice of an equilateral triangle is quite obvious because an equilateral triangle is one that has all of its sides to be equal and all of its angles to be equal. And since the sum of angles in the triangle is 180 degrees, then each angle is going to be 60 degrees because they are all equal. So this is an equilateral triangle. Not so perfect. Okay, so I'm going to make each of the sides two units. Two, two, and two right here. I'm going to call this P, Q, and R. Now, like I said, each angle is 60 degrees. So the angle at P is 60, the angle at Q is 60, and the angle at R is 60 degrees. Now, since I need the 30 degrees, I know that if I bisect one of the angles here, one of the 60 degrees here, it's going to give me a pair of 30 degrees. So I'm going to bisect the angle at P by introducing a perpendicular. Okay, this perpendicular is a vertical line and QR is an horizontal line. And whenever a vertical line crosses an horizontal line, a right angle is formed. So that makes this triangle right here. So I'm going to call this point at first. I'm just going to call it point so I've got a pair of right angle triangles. So this is 90 degrees. This is also 90 degrees. Now this tells us that the triangle right here, this equilateral triangle, has been partitioned into a pair of right triangles. The first, that's the one on the left, is P, B, Q. And the one on the right, which is congruent to the one on the left, is P, V, and R. So labeling the sides, P, Q is two units. Of course, Q, R, we know it to be two units, but the introduction of this red perpendicular does not only bisect the angle at V, it also bisects the length of Q, R. So we would have Q, V as one unit, and VR as one unit. So QV is one, VR as one, is one. Also, the angle at Q is 60, the angle at V is 90 degrees, the angle at R is 60, the angle at P has been bisected into two. So I've got 30 degrees and 30 degrees. Now, since these two right triangles are congruent, I'm just going to focus on one of them. So let's focus on PVQ, the right triangle in green. Okay, PVQ, we would see that since this is a right triangle, we can also apply the Pythagorean theorem. So here, the hypotenuse is PQ, 
because that's the side facing the right angle sign. So I'm going to have PQ squared equal to the opposites plus the adjacents, just the sum of the square of the two sides. So I'm going to have QV squared plus PV squared. Now PQ is 2, so this is going to be 2 squared. QV is 1, that's 1 squared. Now P the length of the side PV is unknown, so I'm just going to retain PV squared. Now this is going to give, this is 4, 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1. So if I take it to the left, I'm going to have 4 minus 1 equals PV squared and PV squared is going to be equal to 3 which implies that the side PV, the length, is equal to the square root of. So it's quite evident that if I redraw the triangle PVQ, the angle at P is 30, the angle at Q is 60. Okay, so I haven't obtained the length of each of the sides. I can apply my trigonometrical ratios to obtain the sine, cos, and tan of 30 and 60 degrees. Let's start with 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees. So we are going to be needing its opposite and its hypotenuse. So the opposite of 30 degrees is the side QV. This is V right here. That's the opposite of angle 30 degrees. That's QV and it has a length of 1 over the hypotenuse. That's the side PQ. So sine 30 is 1 half. Cos 30 degrees, that's going to be the adjacent. If this is the opposite, QV, its adjacent is going to be PV. And it has a length of root 3 divided by the hypotenuse. That's PQ. That's 2. And tan 30 we are going to be needing its opposite over adjacent. Its opposite is QV, that's 1, over its adjacent, PV, that's the square root of 3. We are going to do a similar thing for 60 degrees, sine 60 degrees. So we are going to be needing the opposite of 60. So we can see that PV is its opposite. It has a length of 3. Over the hypotenuse, we know that as to cos 60 is going to be the ratio of its adjacent to hypotenuse. Now this is 60 degrees, its opposite is PV, therefore its adjacent is going to be QV. So this is 1 divided by the hypotenuse is PQ, that's 2. And finally, tan of 60 degrees is equal to the ratio of the opposite to ad the adjacent. The opposite is PV, that's with 3, and its adjacent is QV, which is 1. So we can see that tan 60 is with 3 over 1, which is the same as root 3. Now we can see that sine 30 degrees is equal to cos 60 degrees, 1 half. And also, cos 30 degrees has the same value as sine 60 degrees. And finally, tan 30 degrees is the multiplicative inverse of tan 60 degrees. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, kindly like, subscribe and share it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.